I thought I'd expand on the uh, first video about rack saws and milling timber. So to that end, I uh, dragged a piece of Norway spruce out and as I'm pointing here, the fungi have started to attack it. So it's not really a lot of good, but it's alright for the purposes of this demonstration. So just to repeat myself here, um, the first cut is the most important. You've got to line it up so that you take enough off to get a good flat face, but not take too much off so that you waste timber. So we've got it lined up. So here's the flat face I was talking about, so when the logs rolled over it's nice and stable. This is the second cut in progress, lining up with the corner of the first cut so it makes a nice square edge. Having said that this timber is not a lot of good because of the fungi, it will be alright once it's dried for some rough shelves or something like this. So we're cutting a big 7 inch slab here. This is the start of the process and then when we turn it over we can cut some uh, inch and a quarter boards off it. As you notice there I just was knocking the timber into line because it was um, tightening up on the fence. When you're lifting lumps of timber etc always be careful of not to hurt yourself so therefore always pivot it, lift from one end, roll it, that sort of thing. Having turned the timber over, you can then adjust the fence and continue with the next cut. So here you can see we're cutting an inch and a quarter board off the side of the seven inch slab. And so the process continues until the slab is no longer stable enough to ensure you can get an accurate cut. If you continue you will end up with boards that are tapered. So what we've done here is to cut the remainder of the slab down the middle and now I'm just adjusting the fence so that then I can cut this material into 3 by 2 Just a useful size and uh, uses up the remainder without it going to waste.
otherwise it will just end up as firewood. So here's some of the timber that we've just cut, 7 by inch and a quarter and 3 by 2. Here's some of the 7 inch timber that we've cut showing the light and the dark areas. The dark areas of course where the fungi have infected the timber. And here's a piece of the western red cedar that we cut in the previous video bit later on we'll show you where we use this. It's durable so it's quite good on buildings and external cladding. What follows now is a series of images of a building that we put up a while ago. It took forever but all the timber was milled on the rack saw we saw earlier. Here's the framing for the floor mounted on the beams and here's the joint for the joist to beam intersection and here's the framing which then supports all the wall cladding this wall cladding seems to take a long time but as you can see from this picture uh, it's well worth it the boards are overlapped to weather so uh, and here's the weather side of the building which is quite exposed and so therefore the timber has gone this lovely silver colour. Um, uh, window frames here you can say well they need a coat of paint and here's the finish article. I run a course once a year on building with timber. Uh, look on the Low Impact Living Initiative website that's lowimpact.org under courses.